Hey teachers, do you sell on Teachers Pay Teachers? Have the recent changes made you think about switching to a TPT alternative? I'm not. Here's why. Check this out. Hey, my name is Mike Fuchigami and I am the host of the SEOTpreneur YouTube community. Uh, this is a place where teachers get together and we use strategies, effort, optimization, and tinkering ideas to achieve personal development and financial freedom. This is episode number 17, and today I'm gonna to be exploring this topic about whether or not TPT sellers should switch or also start selling on another platform. Uh, lots of reasons why you might wanna switch, why I fully support your decision if you do wanna tinker with another platform, uh, and quite frankly, why I'm staying with TPT. Uh, I'll outline my reasons, and then maybe you can tell me what I'm missing. Uh, and the slideshow will be available on uh, on the SEOT Premier website, episode 17. Why are people even considering this topic? Why should I switch? It's All Primary had a great poll on their YouTube channel. Basically, given everything that is happening on Teachers Pay Teachers, are you planning or do you already sell your products elsewhere? And there's a bunch of options, Classful, Made by Teachers, Etsy, and personally, I'm not. But I appreciate that people are wondering about what to do. Why switch? Well, maybe your TPT sales are down, you're frustrated by the search algorithm change. Maybe you don't like the new logo that TPT is doing, or you don't like that TPT is running ads, or you've heard that TPT is blocked by some districts and you're worried that that's gonna influence your sales. Maybe you wanna just learn. You like tinkering around with new things and you like exploring things that might work. Great reasons. There's an expression, the grass is always greener on the other side, but I've heard another one, which is, the grass is greener where you water it. It doesn't matter if you're talking about relationships or your side hustle as a teacher. The more time that you spend in a certain area, the better it tends to get. So I'm going to show you a slide from the SEOTpreneur Masterclass on TPT Search. Uh, there's a link there at the 712. But basically, selling on TPT is awesome social emotional learning for teachers. What I mean by that is, we get to develop a sense of self-awareness and self-management because we have to monitor, it's it's not easy selling on TPT or side hustle. We have to monitor how we're doing, are we facing burnout? Maybe we should go in this direction, maybe we should try that direction. So these are fantastic skills that transfer to ourselves and other parts of our lives, but also to our students. We are what we teach. This is really about you. And the wonderful thing about you is you do you and I'll do me and we know this. What I'm gonna do is in this slideshow, I'm gonna talk about why I'm sticking with TPT as a platform. I think it's good to have active citizenship where we try to make our online communities better. And I think it's important where we have critical thinking, where we gather information from different perspective, uh, perspectives so we can make an informed decision. So I'm gonna show you my perspective and then in the comments, I would love to hear your perspective with the information that I'm missing. I don't sell on Etsy. I'm not on Classful. I'm not on these other markets. I'm only on my TPT store. I'm not in TPT Facebook groups. I'm not on the TPT forums. So I have a very, very tiny sliced view of the world. I'd love to know what I'm missing. Please leave a comment. I fully support your decision to tinker and switch. I love this. I don't know what I don't know. And you might discover, yeah, Etsy is my jam. This is where I'm getting, like, things just start taking off for you on Etsy. Then follow the money. That's where you should be going instead of TPT. But I feel that the ability to learn is a superhero power. It's like absorbing another another power and adding it to your collection. And so if you haven't watched this video about TPT success, this outlines how I think effort can play out in the TPT your journey. But again, I'm going to talk about my perspective. I'm going to be missing stuff. Please leave a comment. Let me know what I'm missing. Echo chambers are fantastic, but I'd like to know what I'm legitimately missing. So why I'm staying with TPT. All right. A couple of reasons. I'm going to walk you through them. Diversifying your portfolio is safe, but specializing is where the money is. Okay. So niching down is a, is a good thing. Um, the second reason I'm going to stay with TPT is to keep it simple. And finally, the third reason is because I don't think I need to switch. I can tinker around and find another solution to increase my sales on TPT. 
So diversifying is safe online. Lots of people are saying having multiple streams of income is great because then if the income revenue from this stream, i.e. TPT search, if that starts to get shaky, I have my Pinterest income. I have my Etsy income. I have my, you know, my uh, coaching income. And so then by being in a bunch of different places, I'm a little bit safer. I don't have all my eggs in one basket. All right. I respect that. But safe doesn't mean success. And so this is where I'm going to walk you through. I think there are ways we can diversify uh, where our traffic comes from and still stay within TPT and that ecosystem. I do not have a business background. I basically I'm good at learning. So I just listen to podcasts. I read books. Um, and basically this guy, Alex Hermosi on Bigger Pockets, he did an interview. This guy has taken companies from nothing to six digits, seven digits, $30 million, right? And he breaks down the different steps that you need to do. But his key thing is have one avatar, one product that you sell on one channel. That's it. So you have a specific way of getting the customers. You sell one thing and then that will lead you to six figures. And if you can do that consistently, that'll lead to seven figures. I'm going to try to keep it simple. And what I'm going to talk about here is my synthesis of information that I've learned from Alex Hermosi and Michael Gerber, E-Myth, fantastic book. If you go to seotpreneur.com, stuff we use, I'll list off some of the resources that I've really enjoyed in my business journey. But basically, the way I understand my TPT sales funnel is this, and I'm going to walk you through this. I get traffic from the TPT ecosystem. So teachers have heard of this place called Teachers Pay Teachers. They go there looking for a resource. They type up English language arts resources or social emotional learning. And then maybe one of my products shows up on one of the TPT search pages. And that's how I get my leads. So I'm finding people who might be interested in my product. And the more narrow I can define my avatar, who I'm selling to. So I'm selling to teachers like me who will use resources like I would. That's my avatar. I'm trying to find them. And right now I find them in the TPT ecosystem. Those people find a category like on a search engine results page on TPT, they click on it and they land on my product page. So sales is about converting those leads. And I'm going to convince the people who might be interested in my product, I'm going to convince them to buy my product. So the sales copy, the way that I write my product descriptions, that's to convert prospective people who are viewing my page to turn them into buyers. Okay. So then it goes down the funnel. Some of those people actually buy. And now I have operations, which is just the infrastructure to, to provide the product. It's a digital download, but TPT handles that, right? They have a mechanism for you to download the zip file to get to Google Drive files. Basically, at this stage of the funnel, I'm keeping my promise that I made in the sales page. Hey, this is what you'll get if you buy from my product. Okay. I'm giving you what I sold, what I told you you're going to get right? So this is where they get a download of my PDF product. I'm giving the product to people who might be interested in my product who actually bought the product. I'm giving the resource. So that's my sales funnel. I currently use TPT for my e-commerce store. Why? Because they are the market leader for where people, where teachers go to, to buy resources, right? And so they've handled this. They've done this a lot before. And I know that people have become millionaires by selling on TPT. So that's why I'm choosing TPT here. Okay. But some of us are now thinking, maybe I should, you know, I already have my products. It would be really easy for me to repurpose that content and sell it on a different platform, right? Why don't I take that sales product page and put it on competitor A, put upload my products, uh, and then I have another revenue stream. And maybe this is Etsy, right? I can do it. And so now, Maybe I can increase my sales because my sales from TPT is driving up, drying up, but at least I have income from those channels. Okay. I think you might see some increased sales. Maybe. But I also think you're going to have increased complexity in your business. You're going to have increased customer confusion. And I think eventually you're going to have a hard time meeting the terms and conditions of the different platforms. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Let's keep it simple. Here's why I think sell, for me, selling on different platforms is not keeping it simple. 
I might have more sales. But TPT, if you watch my master class on, on uh, search engine optimization for TPT, you'll know that TPT got $64 million in funding from venture capital, right? They have $64 million to see how big they can take this TPT business. And the question really is, are the other competitor teacher marketplaces, are they offering something different enough that they'll be able to disrupt the TPT ecosystem. Like, oh my gosh, this is the new Uber and everyone's gonna do it this way. Or this is the new Airbnb. Rather than booking with hotels, we're gonna book at Airbnb, right? Like, are these competitors disrupting the system? Because if they're not, they've got a lot of work to do to be able to even come close to the traffic in their ecosystems to be able to buy my product. So right there, I don't think there's a lot for me to buy from but you might know something that I'm missing. Assuming that let's say I can get equal sales, I'm worried that I've tripled the work to be able to keep up my products because every time I update a product page here, I then need to go into competitor A and competitor B where I wrote some stuff and now I gotta update that stuff. If I update my products, I update links. We know that from the TPT search algorithm, probably updates are a good thing. So if I update my product, then I gotta go and update it in product and competitor A and competitor B. And then you're thinking, well, it's just an experiment, I won't do that. But if I don't do that, then my products get out of line and that causes customer confusion, which I'll talk about in a, in a second. Other things that I have to worry about is every platform is a new skill and I have to learn a new way of doing things, right? So this is like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok. They all have different niches and different ways that they do things. So then I have to spend time learning how to do it on this way. Oh, what do you mean Etsy doesn't allow me to have a huge zip file? I can't put my product like that. I have to put it as a PDF and my PDF is too big and I can't get it small enough. So then I've got to like spend time making it fit this ecosystem, which is maybe geared towards a different type of products and here. So already I've tripled my work and I'm hoping that this will lead to sales. Maybe, maybe not. I have to worry about customer confusion, right? So imagine this, a teacher is Googling up your product, they Google up edgy circles, my store, whatever, and they find like, oh, there's stuff on TPT, there's stuff on the edgy circles website, there's stuff on Etsy, there's stuff on this website. Are they all the same? Like, what's the difference? Which one has the better deal? If I get this, like, is that actually the same? It looks like that, but the wording's different because I did a product update, right? So now all of a sudden I'm worried as a customer and there's this idea that actually more choice is not a good thing. Fewer choice, like less choice is a good thing, right? In terms of customer buying. So all of a sudden this starts to become confusing. Is it the same idea? I worry about customer confusion. But the big reason why I don't want to invest time exploring other options is this terms and conditions compliance thing. TPT, we know from their terms and conditions, they don't want you to link to a competitor ecosystem where they can buy stuff. So I can link to another page, but they don't want me to link to a storefront. Okay. And we see that they'll say like, you can sell your product on other stores, just make sure it's not for, um, like TPT is in a higher price and make sure that, um, that you're not linking to those stores. Okay. So right now on my TPT products, like in a PDF, I might have a link to related products, right? I'm trying to upsell or cross sell to other sales products on TPT. Well, imagine this was competitor A and TPT is over here. TPT is going to say, well, no, in your product, you can't link to another competitor. They won't allow that. So then I have to customize each product and fix the links. That gets confusing very quickly. What if I don't link in my product, but then all of these platforms, I send down into an email list because I've heard that email is important. I've got to cultivate my email list. In my email list, let's say I send them to TPT. Well, now all the other competitors, they might have a clause in their terms and conditions that says, hey, you can't send them to competitors. Mike, they don't have that right now. I read the terms and conditions. They don't have that now yet, right? If you're, if you're a teacher marketplace, 
right? The problems that face TPT are not unique to TPT. The problems that TPT faces in terms of personalization uh, or trying to generate revenue in different ways, those are problems that every platform are going to face in this space. If competitor A is not doing personalization yet, they have to because that's where the money is. They will do it one day. If they don't stop you from going to another, to like, hey, you can download a product that links to another ecosystem, they haven't done that yet because they haven't gotten big enough where they realize that's a problem. Eventually, they're going to realize that's a problem. Hey, people buy from our platform and then they get sent over to TPT. We don't like that. So we're going to have a rule that says only listen to our problems or to our place. So this all of a sudden becomes a very tricky piece of the puzzle. I just want to keep it simple. I only want to have one store mechanism. And right now, that's TPT. Sometime in the future, maybe it's something else. But the way that I'm building my empire, I can switch where I point my storefront. And TPT knows this. TPT knows that all of the sellers can go to a different direction. Likewise, um, they can cancel all of our accounts at the same time. It's a mutual thing, right? Like we can both walk away at any point. I know, Mike, but sales are down. I have to do something. And I get that. Tinkering around, trying with things that probably won't work, that's important. Okay. I think there's another solution. And the other solution is getting our own customers that aren't coming from TPT. So we're not dependent on TPT search to give us customers. Because then this is all of our eggs. If you're like me and most sellers, all of our eggs are in the TPT ecosystem for marketing. And that's a problem because anything that TPT does will affect how many people we get. Have you learned something new in this video? Can you go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button? It signals that we're on the right track and we should make more of this kind of stuff. But what if we're not dependent on the TPT ecosystem, right? Let's tinker around to see other ways we can find customers. One way is a customer who buys something in your PDF, you have a link going back to another product. So you upsell them to a bundle or you cross sell them to a related product that they might be interested in. Or, Someone who buys your product, you send them to an email list. You get them to sign up to the email list. No, TPT will never give you the emails. They will never do that. That's their competitive edge. They're not going to do that. Okay, so somehow we get the people on the PDF product. Oh, I love this stuff. I'm going to sign up for your email list. And then eventually, eventually you send them a bunch of emails and they're like, I love what you do. And you nurture that relationship so that one day they click on a sales link in one of your emails and they go through the cycle. Apparently, it's cheaper to nurture and encourage repeat customers than to find new traffic, like buying ads or whatever it is. Another option is to go to where your customers are hanging out. So right now, we're dependent on TPT. Our customers are in the TPT ecosystem. That's why we're selling in TPT. Well, where else do they hang out? They might hang out on social media. I know a lot of you hang out in Facebook groups. I don't personally, but I know a lot of teachers do. So that's a great place to go find customers. Social media, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest. Okay. What about word of mouth? Oh, I love that resource. Where'd you get it? I got it from here, right? So this is cultivating that kind of relationship. Organic search is Google search. I, I mean, I suppose there's Bing search, but do people even use Bing? No, Google search is the market competitor in the US. All right, so, but other search, and then your own website, right? If you can create your own website, which is a happy place for people like you to hang out with, where they see value, then you can create this place that you own. That's land you own. All right, so basically all of these channels, you send them to your sales page. Notice how TPT is great out here. I'm not even thinking about TPT traffic at this point. I think we should be tinkering with other ways to get traffic. Another key thing here is, I want to own the land I build on. What does that mean? I want to create a website like Edgy Circles where people, oh, Edgy Circles, and they, I don't know what that is, but they Google it and then they find the website and they realize, okay, this is where the stuff is. And so basically, I don't own my Facebook account. At any point, my Facebook account can get closed. At any point, Google search algorithms can change. But if people are visiting my website directly, then I control that source of traffic. I can send them to my product pages. Apparently, a lot of people say, oh, I wish I had started my email list earlier. 
So then this is where you basically send everyone to your email list. You bought a product, you send them to the email list. You're a fan on social media, hey, sign up for the email list. Talk more about how to get that email list in a second. So everyone goes to the email list, you're nurturing this relationship, you have links to your product pages, and now we're not dependent on the TPT search algorithm anymore. I'm not there yet. I'm just talking about theoretical for me. Right now what I'm doing is I have a website, I'm trying to optimize for Google search so that I get traffic from Google search and I send them to my product page. I think it's working, like my critical thinking resource didn't sell at all on TPT, but I know that I rank quite highly for critical thinking resource keywords and I think that's where my traffic is coming from that's leading to my sales. I'm gonna walk you through, uh, Computer Creations has a YouTube account, they have a store, and I went to watch one of their videos and, and this person talks about how they made five figures in one month. So I'm going to break you down how they did it, but I'm going to put a link in the YouTube video. So check out the original uh, video link because they break it down more specifically in what they did. But essentially, they went to Facebook groups, they put a link to a landing page, not to the TPT product, but to a landing page that had an awesome free lead magnet so people would want to sign up for the email list to get that free object that eventually had a link to a high paying bundle. Here it is in this diagram here. You go to social media, like a Facebook group, and they talk about how like this is one that they're allowed to post links on. So it's one that's in their niche. They talk about their resources. Hey, I have a link to this resource if you want to check it out. The link goes to a custom-made landing page. Watch their video to find out how they made that landing page. In fact, I'm pretty sure in the video screen, you can see exactly their, their copy, their, their, their sales copy, what they wrote on that, that landing page. And they got 90 subs from that. So people who went on that leading page, lead landing page, some of them signed up for the email list. But I'm not going to talk about the email list because I don't think this came into play at this point of the game. Correct me if I'm wrong, computer creations, because I, I think you're going to watch this. But anyways, they signed up for this email list and they got this free product, which was a pre-existing TPT product. But in the free product, there were some links to some huge high ticket paid bundles. And some of those people bought those bundles. And that's how they ended up getting five figures in a month. So now I'm wondering, huh, the takeaway for me is, I used to have like in my free products, I'd have some links to some cheaper bundles because I'd be afraid of like scaring them off or to hear some other free stuff. But maybe I should just shoot for like gold, shoot for the stars and have a link to my everything bundle. And I wonder if upselling to a huge bundle would work because I only have to make one sale and it takes the same amount of space to upsell to a huge bundle than a small bundle. And if they go to the huge bundle and they see, wow, that's like 200 bucks, and then they go to another product that's only 50 bucks, the 50 buck product looks affordable because they've anchored in their price psychologically. Oh, 200 bucks? No, 50 bucks is a deal, right? Whereas if they go to a 10 buck product and then they see the 50 buck bundle, they're like, whoa, that's too expensive. I'll get the 10 buck product. So maybe I need to start upselling to a huge bundle. I don't know, but this is another way that we can start to get traffic to our TPT sales pages. All right, questions. Or more importantly, what am I missing, right? I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. I don't make as much as some of you watching this channel. Uh, I make more than some of you watching this channel, but you have different experiences that I have. So can you leave in the comments, what do you think? What am I missing? What does another platform do better or worse? Because then I can learn from you, you can learn from me, and then the community kind of grows. Anyhow, let's end on this note. You do you, I'll do me, but collectively, can we talk about what we're doing and other perspectives so that we can challenge the way that we think uh, and try some experiments towards personal development and teacher financial freedom. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Please like, subscribe. Please leave a comment. Please share. And um, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Should I switch to a TPT alternative? I don't know what I'm going to say here. That didn't work. Let's try this again. Where's my mouse? Nope.
right. Where is my mouse? There you are. Hi, mouse. All right. Ooh, subscriber password. Okay, I need your help cracking this one. I wanted to create a way where I could have a link to free stuff on the on the SEOTpreneur website that basically rewarded people who subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I thought initially, like, subscribe to the channel, look at the title of the first video, what's the last word, something like that. But the problem is when you subscribe to the channel, I think that custom video that shows up here, once you watch it, it doesn't show up here anymore. So I can't control that. And I basically want to create a way so that subscribers can put in the password to unlock the secret episode, right? So then you could come here, you're a subscriber, you know the secret password, you type it in, and then boom, you have the slideshow or whatever the freebie is. So anyways, in the comments, if you're on YouTube and you know how people do it, uh, let me know. I think the way to do it is to, if once I get 500 subscribers, I can get a community uh, tab up here where I can post secret messages to subscribers only, right? Like a secret handshake. I don't know what that would look like.